All right, essential question is, how do you find the area of a rhombus? Well, real quick, you're going to find in your book, no theorem at all for, the, for finding the area of a rhombus. Here's why. Remember the simple definition of a rhombus. Here's the picture, wonderful. A rhombus is a parallelogram that is really just equilateral. It's a parallelogram like this that you squish together so much so that all four sides are exactly the same length. Wait a minute, why is that important in terms of area? Let's think a second. A definition of rhombus is, it's a parallelogram. I'll stop there. Here's a parallelogram. And we know how to find the area of the parallelogram. It's base times height. So, if a rhombus is nothing more than a specific parallelogram, well, by golly, then that means the area of the parallelogram formula, base times height, is exactly the same thing that would work for the area of a rhombus, and it does. So if you're given base and a height and a rhombus, well, all you gotta do is plug them into this formula and it will work. Likewise, this is really cool. Over here, a kite. A kite, by definition, is nothing more than a quadrilateral hmm, with two distinct pairs of consecutive sides congruent, as you see right here and you see right here. Well, if I take that and morph it into this rhombus, there's two distinct pairs of consecutive sides. There's two, there's two, there's two. So that bad boy right there is a really cool kite. Why is that important in terms of area? But uh, bing. One half diagonal one times diagonal two is the formula for the area of a kite. So that formula will also work for a rhombus because a rhombus is nothing more than just a more specific type of kite. So you got two options, which is really cool for the area of a rhombus. Let's apply these to a couple examples. Here we go. Example number one and number two. You see this rhombus right there? you got two options. Remember, either area of the parallelogram or the area of the kite formula. It doesn't matter which one. But in this case, when I see diagonals given, I would probably say, if it was me, my gut instinct, my little hunch, would say, mm, probably this formula is what I'm going to use. And you're going to find that I actually did use that down here. But one thing I remember about rhombi, rhombuses, I don't know, is this. They are perpendicular right there. The diagonals are perpendicular and the diagonals bisect each other. Well, that's important because if this little piece up here is 20, that means this little piece here is also 20. So there's the length of one diagonal, which is why I put 40 right there. Over here, same, same argument. If this is 30, that means this piece up there has to be 30 because it's bisected. So that's why I put 60 right there. So simple math is 1 half times 40 gives you 20. The 20 times 60 gives you 1,200 inches squared. Don't forget your inches squared. And you're done. There we go. Number two. Ooh, look at number two. Number two is a little different because I only see one diagonal. However, um, I'm probably going to think my hunch again, my gut instinct, is going to be that I'm going to use this formula because I'm given one diagonal. I am given a side length. Uh, that could be a base, so it could maybe be this. I just don't know the height. So either of these kind of are good options, but here's what I see right away. If I draw this diagonal right across here, and since it's a rhombus, I know it's perpendicular, and I know it's bisected, and I know this is bisected. Ooh, that's important. Watch. Because if I know that 16, the original length of the diagonal was bisected, that means this has to be 8. And this has to be 8. You're saying, yes, yeah, so what, Mr. Modder? Who cares? Watch. Hmm. Since I know that this is 8, whoops, this is 8. This is a right angle. So this is a right triangle up here. As a matter of fact, all of them are right triangles, all four of them. This is 10, which means this is 10. Now, looky there. I'm looking at a right triangle that has a hypotenuse of 10 and a leg that's 8. That sounds like a triple to me. It does. So that means this has to be 6, as does this have to be 6. So there's your length of the diagonal. Plug it into the formula. We already got 16 in for the one diagonal. That means the other diagonal length is we just found it to be six. Or sorry, uh, 12. So this is 12. So just simple math then. 1 half times 16 gives you 8. Bring the 12 down, 8 times 12 is 96 meters squared. And there's example number two. Cool. Let's do another one. A little bit of a word problem, kind of, I guess. So here's example number three, and it says, find the area of a rhombus whose perimeter is 20. Ooh, it's a different one already. And longer diagonal is 8. So in the picture, I've labeled this rhombus bark. Whatever. That's it. Whatever. Bark. It tells you that the longer diagonal, so B R Burr, that cold, cold diagonal, Burr, it is eight. 
So that whole distance is 8, and it tells you the perimeter is 20. So if the perimeter is 20, wait, I'm going to stop a second. I think I see diagonals, so I'm probably thinking, well, why don't I use the area of a kite formula because I know that has diagonals in it. So let's see if that works. I know the length of one diagonal, let's find the length of AK. Since the rhombus is equilateral, that means, so, 20 divided by 40. Why am I doing that? Because 20 is the perimeter. And if the distance around this shape is 20, I need to break that up into four equal parts, which means each side length is 5. So this has to be 5, and so does all the other three. This has to be 5, this has to be 5, and this has to be 5. So why is that important? Well, we know the longer diagonal, the, the cold diagonal, BR, BR, is 8. We know it's bisected because it's a property of the diagonals of a rhombus. Ooh, this is looking nice. And I know the properties say this. The diagonals are perpendicular. So therefore, I'm looking at a right triangle down there. And one leg is 4. I don't know the other leg. And the hypotenuse is 5. Bingo. Triple. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, that means this piece has to be 3, which means this piece has to be 3 as well. So there you go. You got the length of one diagonal to be 6. You got the length of the other diagonal to be 8. Plug them into the formula, as I did behind me here. So you see one half diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. 8 and 6 are the two diagonals. 1 half times 8 gives me 4. 4 times 6 gives me 24. Unit squared. I don't know the unit, so that's why I put U. And there's your answer. Cool. I'm going to give you two more examples. Actually, these two examples, they're not done yet. I'm going to have you look at these. I'll explain them to you. And then what I want you to do is uh, stop the video. Matter of fact, I'll stop it. And I'll make a second video that actually explains how to do them. So here you go. There are two rhombi, rhombuses, whatever. They're rhombus park, rhombus park, P-A-R-K. You're finding the area of the rhombus. Two different scenarios, though. So this one here, you're given PR per that whole distance, that length, that diagonal is 12 miles. Well, that's pretty far. And the only other thing that you're given is that that thing right there is 30 degrees. YKR, the angle YKR is 30 degrees. And you're finding the area of that particular rhombus. Second example I want you to do. This particular thing is given to you, I guess if you will, the distance from that point down here perpendicularly is 25 meters. And the perimeter of the park is 52 meters. That's all I'm giving you. That's all you need, actually. Remember, you got two options. Either one of these could apply to either one of these. You choose the right one, and rock and roll. So good luck. I'll talk to you in a little bit.